Hello, my name is Sarah and I am back-ish. We'll see. I had some editing difficulties last week and so there was no video. I am feeling very pregnant. At the time of filming, I am about 20 and a half weeks and by the time you see this, I will be 21 weeks at least, unless you watch in a year, in which case I'll have a baby. As we all know, pregnant or not, people love to give you advice and they are going to offer a lot of things based off of just their own experience. And there's a quote on advice where he says, advice is just a form of nostalgia that has been dug up from the trash, polished and re-offered out there. And it's true, people are offering advice based on their own experiences. So I'm not hating it. In fact, I actually kind of really appreciate the advice and I can just kind of pick and choose what I do and don't want. Judgment is different than advice. Do not mix the two of those together. That is called shaming and that is not okay. So since I am halfway through this pregnancy, I wanted to talk about five pieces of advice that I have been given and I would like to share them with you because I will say I don't think I've heard any of these be offered or shared by anyone else yet. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you enjoy it at some point throughout this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We talk all about maternity and pregnancy and then lifestyle vlogs here. So welcome. So the very first piece of ad ad why can't I say advice today? So the very first piece of advice that I was given was actually in relation to my posture. I am pretty big on posture. If you follow my other channel, I've made a few videos on posture and I appreciate it. I am still now trying to like keep my muscles engaged and activated, even though I'm not really working out. But one of the things that comes along with pregnancy is the hip expansion. And my hips went from feeling quite boyish to feeling quite womanly. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. Uh, but when Whatever. I mean, there's not much I can do about it, but the pain there has got to be something I can do about the pain And sure enough there is the first thing that somebody told me to do was to adjust my foot posture to being underneath my hips So my hips were here and they my feet were always standing underneath now my hips have come out and they are Expanded I need to also adjust my stance. Do I feel like I'm power posing all the time? Yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable I'm not gonna lie but it has made a huge, huge difference in the hip pain. I also feel more stable and I feel like I'm using my muscles the way I need to. So if you're feeling like you have any form of hip pain during your pregnancy, absolutely adjust your foot stance and see if they are actually lining up where your hip bones are now versus where they were before. The second piece of advice that I was given was not really advice so much, it was just kind of like a reminder. One of my clients told me, remember that there are 3.5 billion different women in the world and that means that there are 3.5 billion different ways to be a mom. I found that really reassuring because I felt like that was a good reminder that there's also 3.5 billion different ways to go through pregnancy and the fears or not having fears or feeling like you should be doing something versus not doing something. We are all just trying to do the best we can. It's not gonna be perfect. And the lack of perfection actually comes up in my fifth piece of advice, but we'll get there in a second. We have to first go into number three. And number three is actually more based on the first trimester but I think overall it has a good theme for the entirety of pregnancy and that is to listen to your pregnancy cravings in the first trimester. I actually got this off of a blog. I was trying to find ways to like eat healthier in the first trimester or how to battle nausea and all that stuff and this woman who is a chef wrote eat what you can and drink what you can. Everything's gonna settle out and balance out around your second trimester. Don't worry about this. Like if you're eating Subway salads or Subway sandwiches or pizza and that's the only thing you can eat, eat it. It is food. It will balance out later. <laughs> For me, I didn't have too many food aversions, but I had zero appetite. And I guess that kind of translated into food aversions because eventually I would look at food and I would just be like, I don't want it. I can't eat it. Like even if I was just so hungry, I'm not anymore. Not if that's what I'm eating. <laughs> I basically had like the food palette of a five-year-old and it was veggie nuggets and plum sauce, which is not my normal diet. <laughs> I'm now obviously in the second trimester. I'm cutting out all my breasts, but I am panting like I just ran up a hill in a Spartan exercise. Like this is ridiculous. This is more than usual. <laughs> but that actually was not anything related just to second trimester because that's been going on since the beginning. Anyway, the second trimester has been a lot easier. I've been finding it's easier to drink water and easier to eat healthier choices and actually finding things I want to eat that are not simply fast and easy or processed. 
so that's been really good. <laughs> Number four was given to me by a client as well. Actually, every single piece of this advice besides number three was given to me from clients as I massaged them. They laid on my table and just gave me a world of information and wealth. So this one was given to me by a client who said her friend had a pregnancy that she thought was very much not glowy or pretty or happy. She was always going on about how she just did never had the glow. I wish I had the glow. And then after she had her baby, it got worse because now you've got a baby, so you're covered in all of that. She says when she looks back at photos of herself pregnant, she definitely had the glow. She just didn't see it in the moment. So that would be the fourth piece of advice that I am trying to keep in mind when I do see photos, or even if I'm editing videos or getting ready for the day, is to look for the glow. I might not see it and sometimes I have to really find it. I don't feel it at all. I just feel lumpy. Rather than thinking of all of that, I am actually trying to remind myself, one day you're gonna actually feel lumpy and you're also going to look lumpy and you're going to just be covered in baby and all of their things. So tip number four is to look for the glow because everyone's got it. It's just not as easy to see it until hindsight's 2020, you know? Is that saying bad now? Because of last year? I don't know. I'm so out of breath, wow. For the fifth piece of advice that I am sharing with you today is for parenting. I got this from a client who is a psychologist and he said that he wanted to kind of be mindful that if he was going to make mistakes, he knew he would be making mistakes, we all do. If he was going to make mistakes, he wanted to err on the side of love. And I thought that was such a profound way of saying something so simple <laughs> because I haven't talked a whole lot about my upbringing, but I've hinted at it here and there, especially on the other channel in videos like healing the inner child or background stories like that. There's a homeschooling one, all that stuff. My childhood was very strict and very, very chaotic, but like restricted, like restricted chaos or chaotic restriction. I am not quite sure. It was a lot though. And I was talking about it with my mom the other day of how, yes, she made lots of mistakes with us, <laughs> but everything she did was out of love. She was trying to do the very best she thought she could for us. And I think maybe that I've been able to appreciate that. And I think my siblings as well, because my mom has been able to see that like, oh, that was a mistake or that was not the right way to do that. So she sees the mistake and has apologized for them, but we've also understood that she was doing it out of love. Anyway, I'm getting a little off topic and that is a video for another time. My point here is that when you parent and when we all parent, I think there's a saying of like, don't worry if you're gonna screw up your kids, you will. That's okay. <laughs> it's just a part of parenting. But if you're gonna make mistakes, when you make mistakes, err on the side of love. As I said, I don't think I've heard any of these before, so they stood out to me. I hope they provide something of value to you. Now I would love to hear from you. What is a big piece of advice that you could offer me as a parent? If you don't have kids, what is something that you really appreciate that your parents did for you? I wanna know. Leave them in the comments down below and I can't wait to read them all and chat with you guys about them. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this channel, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you when I see you. Bye.